Welcome, brave souls, to another spine-chilling episode of Our Scary Stories. Tonight, we delve into the shadowy depths of fear and the supernatural. Prepare to be transported to the seemingly peaceful confines of the Oakleaf Senior's home, where an unassuming daily newspaper turns into an object of terror. Will the residents uncover the secrets hidden within the ominous print of the Daily Tribute? Or will they become mere puppets in its deathly predictions? Steal your nerves, friends. As the old saying goes, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. But what if that gift turns into a ticking time bomb? Let's unfold this horrifying mystery in the Daily Tribute. At the crack of dawn, as the soft golden light spilled over the verdant lawns of Oakleaf Senior's home, the quietness of the new day was ruptured by the crinkling sounds of a newspaper. The scent of fresh ink mixed with the familiar aroma of brewing coffee carried through the polished halls. The caretaker, Harold, with his perpetually disheveled hair and glasses perched precariously on the bridge of his nose, found the newspaper, the daily tribute, placed meticulously at the center of the well-worn mahogany table in the dining hall. He wrinkled his brows in confusion. This was no ordinary paper. It was not the cheerful daily filled with crosswords and funny cartoons that the residents usually enjoyed over their morning toast. Harold knew something was terribly amiss as he read the eerie obituary. His hands shook as he read out loud, George Harrison, beloved resident, will pass away of a heart attack at 3.33 p.m. today. In the quiet corner of the dining hall, old George, a former accountant with a twinkle in his eye and a love for sharing war stories, overheard Harold. He chuckled, dismissively waving off Harold's concern with a frail hand. George found amusement in the absurdity of it all. After all, he had been in excellent health, with his heart as good as any man half his age, or so his doctor claimed. The other residents, however, responded differently. Martha, a petite woman who was known for her love of mystery novels, and her predilection for being overly dramatic, gasped, her wide eyes darting between George and the mysterious newspaper. Francis, a stoic man of few words, simply adjusted his thick-rimmed glasses and continued to sip his lukewarm coffee. However, the newspaper's chilling prediction had seeped into the peaceful morning, casting a long, cold shadow. Meanwhile, Nancy, the matronly and energetic head nurse, found herself wrestling with unease. The cogs in her head spun rapidly. Could it be a prank by one of the residents? Or perhaps a misprint? The idea of someone's death being foretold in a newspaper was ludicrous. But the grim nature of the joke and its potential to disturb the residents troubled her. That day, the entire home buzzed with hushed whispers and anxious glances. The sunny day seemed less bright, the blooming roses in the garden less fragrant, and the fresh morning air heavier. Even the chirping birds sounded like they were reciting a mournful dirge. The walls of the seniors' home had stood tall for many years, sheltering countless lives within. But on this peculiar day, they seemed to echo an ominous warning that was impossible to ignore. Underneath the constant murmur of anxiety, George, seemingly undeterred by the grim prediction of his demise, heartily laughed, patted Harold's shoulder, and quipped, I always knew I'd be famous one day, didn't know it'd be as a dead man. His hearty laugh reverberated around the room, a valiant attempt to drown out the dread insidiously creeping into the corners of Oakleaf Senior's home. As the strange day wore on, the odd newspaper prediction almost became a myth, a ghost story shared over cups of tea, until the dining hall clock struck 3.33 p.m. The once bustling home fell silent, as if collectively holding its breath, waiting, watching. This moment marked the beginning of the bizarre saga that would later consume the once tranquil abode. The minute hand on the dining hall's antique clock ticked to meet the hour hand at 33 minutes past three, marking a pivotal moment in the ordinarily serene Oakleaf Senior's home. The cacophony of conversation and laughter from lunchtime had dwindled to a low murmur, and the vibrant atmosphere had given way to a lingering air of tension. As if echoing the anticipation, the usually jovial sun hid behind thick clouds, casting an ominous shadow over the home. George Harrison, the protagonist of the disturbing prophecy, sat at his usual corner table, his poker face showing no sign of the predicted doom. He jovially shared a tale of his army days with his companions, punctuating the air with contagious laughter. His jovial demeanor was a stark contrast to the hushed apprehension that hung in the air. Nancy, the head nurse, was a silent observer from the hallway, casting furtive glances in his direction, the anxiety gnawing at her. Suddenly, George's laughter faltered, his face lost color, and his hands clutched his chest. 
His eyes widened in fear and surprise. He collapsed to the ground, his body convulsing in a struggle against the invisible assailant. A gasp rippled through the room. The prophecy, dismissed as a joke earlier, returned to haunt them all. Harold rushed to George's side while Martha shrieked, her eyes wide and panicked. Francis, stoic as ever, looked on grimly, his hands trembling slightly. As Nancy darted forward, medical kit in hand, the world seemed to slow down. The frantic whispers and cries, the racing heartbeat in her ears, the cold dread, everything intensified. But her years of training kicked in, and she began to administer CPR, hoping against hope that the morbid prediction would not come true. Despite her valiant efforts, George passed away, just as the prophecy foretold. His final breath cast a pall over the entire room. The shock on everyone's face was a mirror to Nancy's inner turmoil. The laughter that had filled the room minutes ago now seemed like a distant echo, replaced by the sobering reality of George's untimely departure. That evening, Oakleaf Senior's home, usually filled with the gentle hum of life, was blanketed by a suffocating silence. George's empty chair in the corner was a chilling reminder of the tragic events of the day. A sense of foreboding took root in everyone's hearts, turning the once lively home into a house of mourning. As the moon hung high in the sky, its cold, milky light illuminating the lonely corridors of the home, it felt as if the walls themselves were whispering the tale of the strange newspaper prediction that had come true. While everyone retreated into their quarters, mourning the loss of their friend and grappling with fear, Nancy was left with the daunting task of facing another day, another newspaper, and perhaps another obituary. Her heart sank as she thought of the morning headlines. Their safe haven had been breached by an eerie mystery that had left its mark on their lives, and things were never going to be the same again. As the lights dimmed and the night advanced, a deep sense of dread took hold. Tomorrow was a new day, and with it came the fear of the unknown. The peaceful rhythm of life at Oakleaf had been disrupted, replaced with an unsettling tune. As dawn broke, washing over the sprawling compound of Oakleaf Senior's home with a muted glow, the place was noticeably bereft of its usual cheerful morning bustle. The staff, usually quick to rouse the seniors with warm greetings and breakfast trays, moved lethargically. Fear and trepidation took the place of their usually upbeat demeanor. Harold found himself standing outside the dining hall, a cold knot of dread in his stomach. As he pushed open the creaky door, he couldn't help but scan the room for the familiar sight of the Daily Tribute newspaper. And there it was, lying unassuming on the polished mahogany table, its black and white layout spelling out a monochrome fate. His hands shook as he picked it up, scanning the obituary column. The very words sent a chill down his spine. The name, Mary Simmons, jumped out at him, followed by the grim details of her demise. The prediction was once again precise, detailing that Mary would slip in the bathroom and suffer a fatal head injury at 2.15 p.m. Mary Simmons was a charming lady in her 80s, loved by all for her radiant smile and stories of her globe-trotting youth. A mere thought of her being the next victim of the cryptic newspaper prediction was devastating. Nancy, when informed, wore a grave expression. She promptly ordered for extra care and precautions to be taken, especially in Mary's case. As word spread about the new prediction, a hush descended over the residents. Martha, still shaken from yesterday's incident, paled visibly and crossed herself. Francis, though maintaining his usual quiet demeanor, had a new tightness around his eyes. Meanwhile, Mary just laughed it off, with a sad tilt to her vibrant eyes. Can't even take a bathroom break in peace now, she joked. Her laughter, though infectious, had a distinct hollow ring to it. Despite the heightened vigilance and caution, tragedy did not veer off its course. Despite the anti-slip mats and constant supervision, Mary slipped on a bar of soap that had inadvertently been left on the bathroom floor. Her lifeless form on the cold tiles, her once vibrant eyes staring at nothingness, was a ghastly sight that was etched into the minds of the onlookers. A once vibrant abode was now a house of trembling hearts and hushed whispers. As the staff grappled with the grim reality, they also braced themselves for an equally challenging task, keeping the remaining residents calm and reassured. For behind their professional facade, they too were victims of a growing fear, their hearts heavy with a shared sorrow. With each passing day, the mysterious daily tribute nod at the tranquility of Oakleaf Senior's home. It sowed seeds of fear that bloomed into large, haunting shadows hanging over the people. The spirit of camaraderie and cheer that once graced the dining hall now cowered under the stark black and white prediction of doom. 
As the day bled into night and the residents retired into their rooms, an ominous question lingered in the air, who would be named in the next edition of the Daily Tribute. The uncertainty of the answer was a chilling lullaby that put the haunted home to sleep. The bright rays of the morning sun did little to lift the gloom enveloping the Oakleaf Senior's home. With the demise of two beloved residents, it was more a home of foreboding now than of tranquility. The enigma of the daily tribute had sown the seeds of fear and suspicion. The once comforting routine of the senior's home had now been replaced by a grim wait for the daily delivery of the newspaper. On this fateful day, Harold, already under the weight of anxiety, retrieved the newspaper from the dining hall table. His heart hammered in his chest as his eyes scanned the obituary, coming to rest on a name that made his blood run cold. Harold Brown, it read, will suffer a fatal fall at 11.45 a.m. Harold felt the world spin around him, the words on the paper blurring into a cruel joke. He was no longer just the bearer of the grim news, he was now its subject. A heart that had sympathized with the victims was now the one to be pitied. For the first time since this mystery began, the danger was intimately personal. Word quickly spread, and a wave of concern washed over the home. The residents, who had always been fond of Harold for his dedication and kindness, were visibly distressed. Nancy, trying to control her own panic, immediately arranged for Harold to stay away from any stairs. A couple of the stronger residents, including Francis, volunteered to keep a close watch on Harold. Despite the looming prediction, Harold carried on with his duties, though his usual chirpiness was replaced by a silence that echoed the fear gripping his heart. He offered reassurances, forced smiles, but the fear in his eyes was hard to miss. As the clock inched closer to 11.45 a.m., an oppressive silence descended upon the hole. It was a snapshot of time where every tick of the clock sounded like a thunderclap, heightening the tension. Harold, surrounded by his friends, was seated firmly in the center of the dining hall, far from any staircase. Yet, in a cruel twist of fate, as the clock struck the ill-fated time, a mouse darted across the dining hall floor. Harold, startled, stood abruptly, lost his balance, and fell heavily. The impact was severe, and despite the immediate medical attention and frantic calls for an ambulance, Harold's life slipped away, adding another victim to the terrifying prophecy of the Daily Tribute. His sudden demise sent a fresh wave of shock and terror through Oakleaf. Everyone was left grappling with the loss of a friend and the chilling realization of their potential fate. A shroud of horror and helplessness fell over the home, the dread deepening like a wound that wouldn't heal. The reality of their situation was more apparent than ever. They were not just residents in a senior's home. They were the pawns of a mysterious force that held their fate in its grasp, delivered daily in the chillingly ordinary form of a newspaper. As night fell, the home was in the grip of a paralyzing fear, and the question loomed larger than ever, who would be next? The stark absence of Harold's cheerful presence made the morning even more unbearable at Oakleaf Senior's home. However, the arrival of the dreaded daily tribute remained cruelly consistent. This time, the obituary held no name, just an ominous note. The deliverer is coming. It was a cryptic message that left everyone puzzled. But within the veil of fear and confusion, there was a glimmer of hope. Could it mean help was on the way? With growing unease, Nancy decided to involve the authorities. Given the chilling accuracy of the obituaries so far, they had to take every hint seriously. She dialed the local police station, her voice quivering as she tried to explain the bizarre situation. The reception on the other end was initially skeptical, but the gravity in Nancy's voice and the unexplainable events at Oakley finally prompted action. Detective Laura Morris was assigned to the case. Laura was a young yet seasoned detective known for her sharp mind and tenacity. She arrived at the senior home later that day, her eyes taking in the manicured gardens, the aging brick facade of the building, and the visibly anxious residents. There was an odd contrast between the peaceful setting and the terror that resided within its walls. Upon meeting Nancy, Laura quickly skimmed through the past editions of the Daily Tribute, her expression grave. She confirmed that the obituaries matched the official death records, solidifying the eerie link between the newspaper and the string of deaths. Meanwhile, the residents observed the new visitor with a mix of apprehension and hope. Martha, her eyes red from recent crying, watched the detective from behind her knitting, while Francis silently observed Laura from his favorite armchair. Throughout her stay, Laura questioned the staff and residents, trying to unearth any leads. She explored the nooks and crannies of Oakleaf, 
hunting for anything that might reveal the source of the newspapers. But every corner of the home only echoed the same dread that had been shadowing the place since the arrival of the first mysterious paper. That evening, the home was buzzing with hushed discussions about the detective's visit. Speculations floated around, yet the unsettling dread remained. Detective Laura promised to return the following day, leaving the residence in a bittersweet mixture of hope and fear. As the day ended, the ominous prediction of the Deliverer weighed heavily on their minds. It was as if time was ticking away to an unknown event that could either lift the curse of the Daily Tribute or plunge them further into the depths of their nightmarish existence. Under the cloak of the impending darkness, Oakleaf Sr.'s home braced itself for another uncertain night, hoping against hope that the sunrise would herald the end of their ordeal. Oakleaf Sr.'s home greeted another day, bathed in morning light that seemed oddly insensitive to the despair within its walls. The residents stirred from their sleep, bracing themselves for another day of uncertainty and fear. Today, however, they had something different to look forward to, the return of Detective Laura Morris. Arriving promptly, Laura set to work immediately. Today's edition of the Daily Tribute carried another message. The Deliverer is closer than you think. Laura examined the message carefully, her brow furrowing in thought. She decided to start her investigation by tracing the origin of the newspaper. Yet, despite questioning the delivery personnel, she found no leads. The paper just seemed to appear, with no one recalling how it got there. It was as if the newspaper had materialized out of thin air. As Laura dug deeper, the mystery only seemed to grow. She interviewed the residents and staff again, hoping to pick up overlooked details or subtle clues. Yet, each conversation only reaffirmed the inexplicable nature of the situation. Laura spent the rest of the day combing through Oakleaf's archives, looking for anything that might explain the origin of the Daily Tribute. Old files, dusty record books, and faded photographs filled the room. Yet, the history of Oakleaf revealed nothing more than a once happy home for the aged. There was no sign of any past incidents or clues hinting at the existence of the Daily Tribute. The detective's focused presence brought a new dynamic to the home. It offered a ray of hope that cut through their growing despair. Residents like Martha found some comfort in her steely determination, and even Francis, usually disinterested, appeared to be following Laura's progress with quiet interest. As the day wore into evening, however, the atmosphere began to tense up again. With no new obituary, a strange quiet reigned, but the vague prediction about the Deliverer left them with an unsettling sense of anticipation. Meanwhile, Laura seemed lost in thought her eyes reflecting the flickering dance of the setting sun against the window. She felt a growing frustration at the lack of progress. Her trained mind grappled with the puzzle at hand. There had to be a clue she was missing, a piece that would make the picture whole. The day ended on a mixed note. The lack of a new name in the obituary was a minor relief, but the deliverer's predicted arrival and the lack of concrete answers left the atmosphere heavy. As Oak Leaf Sr.'s home retired for the night, Detective Laura Morris promised to return, her mind worrying with thoughts, determined to crack the mystery of the daily tribute. The next morning at Oak Leaf Sr.'s home began with an unusual calm. Despite the peaceful atmosphere, there was an undercurrent of anticipation. The promise of the Deliverer's arrival in the daily tribute had planted seeds of both dread and hope. Detective Laura Morris arrived early, a fresh determination in her stride. Today's edition of the Daily Tribute held the usual obituary. The name that sent a shiver through the home was Dorothy Smith, one of the oldest residents, set to pass due to a heart attack at precisely 4 p.m. The mundane normality of the cause of death in the midst of such a chilling situation struck a grim note. But what caught everyone's attention was the additional cryptic note. The deliverer arrives at noon. As the clock ticked closer to the noon hour, a tangible tension gripped the home. The staff made a collective effort to comfort Dorothy, whose eyes had welled up with fear. Dorothy, usually a beacon of strength, now seemed frail, the stark reality of her impending fate hitting her hard. Nancy and the other caregivers rallied around her, offering soothing words and comforting touches. As the clock struck twelve, everyone held their breath. An eerie silence enveloped the room, broken suddenly by the chime of the doorbell. Detective Morris, closest to the entrance, opened the door to reveal a man standing with an old-fashioned bicycle by his side. He was dressed in a vintage delivery outfit, complete with a peat cap. An aura of enigma surrounded him, his identity hidden behind a pair of round glasses and a thick beard. 
He introduced himself simply as Dylan. I'm here to deliver the daily tribute, he said, his voice calm yet carrying an undeniable power. The room fell silent. The deliverer was here. Dylan was invited in, his presence causing a whirlwind of emotions among the residents and staff. Fear, relief, and curiosity washed over them. Detective Morris, her surprise quickly turning into focus, began questioning Dylan. He revealed that he was merely a courier. He shared that he received the newspapers from an unknown source and was instructed to deliver them to Oakleaf. However, he claimed no knowledge about the contents of the newspaper or its mysterious predictions. The interrogation yielded no immediate answers, yet Dylan's arrival marked a turning point in the eerie saga. The Deliverer, the mysterious entity they feared and anticipated, was a simple courier. As the day wore on, the looming hour of Dorothy's predicted death approached. Despite the grim anticipation, there was a glimmer of hope. With the Deliverer now within their reach, would they finally be able to break the chain of events predicted by the Daily Tribute? With bated breath, they waited for what the rest of the day would bring. As the dreaded hour of 4 p.m. approached, Dorothy sat quietly in her room. She was surrounded by her fellow residents and Detective Laura Morris, all waiting in an agonizing silence. Meanwhile, Dylan, the mysterious Deliverer, was kept under close observation in the dining hall. Despite the looming uncertainty, there was a flicker of defiance. They refused to let Dorothy face her predicted fate alone, their collective will serving as a fragile shield against the unknown power at play. Meanwhile, in the dining hall, Dylan maintained his calm. He continued to insist that he was merely a messenger and had no control over or knowledge about the contents of the daily tribute. His calm demeanor was unnerving, and yet, there was a sincerity in his eyes that was difficult to dismiss. As the clock neared 4 p.m., Dorothy clutched the locket she always wore, a picture of her late husband inside. It was a moment of profound tension, each tick of the clock echoing ominously in the room. But then, 4 p.m. came and went, and Dorothy remained unchanged. The room was enveloped in stunned silence before relief washed over the residents. For the first time, the daily tribute had been wrong. The development shook Oakleaf Sr.'s home to its core. Questions swarmed like a whirlwind. Had the arrival of the Deliverer altered the course? Did Dylan hold the key to breaking the deathly cycle? Was Dorothy's survival just a temporary reprieve or a sign of a turning tide? With the unforeseen survival of Dorothy, the residents allowed themselves to feel a flicker of hope. Even Detective Morris, who had maintained her professional composure, couldn't hide a sigh of relief. The rest of the day passed in a tentative calm, the residents discussing the day's events in hushed whispers. Dylan remained cooperative, answering more of Laura's questions, but revealing little else. Despite the guarded optimism, they couldn't shake off the awareness of the mysterious force that had gripped their lives. As night fell, Oakleaf Sr.'s home was wrapped in a silence, but one different from the past nights. It was not a silence born of fear, but of cautious hope. They had seen a break in the grim chain of events, and now they dared to believe in the possibility of an end to the horrifying saga of the Daily Tribute. The next morning at Oakleaf Sr.'s home dawned with a distinct change in the air. Despite the eerie journey of the past week, there was a shift in the energy of the home. The fear was still present, but it was no longer all-consuming. Dorothy's survival had sparked a change that had begun to replace the dread with a cautious optimism. Detective Laura Morris arrived with a determined air, her focus set on Dylan. He was still there, having agreed to stay until the mystery of the daily tribute was solved. While he remained an enigma, his presence felt less threatening than before. However, the latest edition of the daily tribute brought a new shock. The obituary of the day named Dylan as the victim. He was slated to meet his end that afternoon, but the cause of death was left unsettlingly vague. Dylan appeared shocked, his calm demeanor crumbling at the sight of his name in the ominous print. The room watched in stunned silence as the Deliverer became the Delivered. Detective Morris swiftly got into action, reassuring Dylan and increasing the security around the home. She liaised with the local police, ensuring a constant watch on Dylan and preparing for any possible threat. Meanwhile, the residents watched the unfolding events with a strange sense of relief mixed with apprehension. The day passed in a slow, ticking rhythm as everyone kept an eye on Dylan, the tension palpable. He spent his hours under the protective watch of Detective Morris, his calm facade replaced by an anxious anticipation. The afternoon arrived, and with it the predicted hour of Dylan's death. 
Much like the previous day, everyone gathered, this time around Dylan. The minutes crept by with agonizing slowness, the ticking clock serving as a grim countdown. Yet, the predicted moment passed without incident. Dylan, much like Dorothy, remained unscathed. A collective sigh of relief filled the room, the sense of shared victory mingling with the lingering tension. As the residents retired for the night, they did so with lighter hearts. For the second day in a row, the daily tribute had failed to claim a life. The chilling sequence of the past week seemed to be breaking down, and with it, their terror was beginning to recede. While the mystery of the daily tribute was far from solved, they were in a much different place than a week ago. The shadow of fear was lifting, replaced by a newfound hope. As Oak Leaf Sr.'s home prepared to face another day, they did so with a belief in their collective strength, and the hope for a swift end to the ominous newspaper's reign. Morning light streamed into Oak Leaf Sr.'s home, illuminating the worn faces of the residents with a warm, comforting glow. There was a new resilience in their expressions, their spirits buoyed by the survival of Dorothy and Dylan. Today, however, was different. It marked the day they would finally take back control. Detective Laura Morris was already at the home when the Daily Tribute arrived. It contained no obituary this time, only a message. The circle is broken. The final tribute is paid. As they deciphered the cryptic words, a hush fell over the room. Simultaneously, Dylan, who was standing in the corner of the room, collapsed to the ground, clutching his chest in pain. The staff rushed to his aid, the memories of the past week's events making their hearts race. Dylan was quickly attended to, and to everyone's relief, it turned out to be nothing more than a panic attack. The stress of the past days had finally taken a toll on him. Once he was stabilized and rested, he looked around at the relieved faces, a new understanding reflecting in his eyes. With the newspaper's final message in Dylan's non-lethal episode, it seemed like the mystery of the daily tribute was reaching its end. The supernatural grip that held them in fear seemed to be loosening, the circle indeed broken. There was an almost tangible sigh of relief in the home that day. The staff, the residents, and Detective Morris allowed themselves to relax for the first time in weeks. Although the mystery of who had been behind the daily tribute remained unsolved, they were thankful that the horrifying sequence of events had ceased. That night, Oak Leaf Sr.'s home was filled with a newfound peace. There were smiles where there had been worry lines, laughter replacing hushed whispers. Even though the mystery was never fully explained, the experience had brought them closer. The ordeal had instilled in them a greater appreciation for each day, and the bonds among the residents had grown stronger. As Detective Laura Morris left the home, she cast a final glance at the peaceful residents. She was drawn into the mystery by the terror of a supernatural newspaper, but she was leaving with a story of resilience, hope, and the strength of a community that had faced the fear together. She knew she would never forget the time spent in Oakleaf Sr.'s home and the chilling saga of the Daily Tribute. In the quiet stillness of the night, the home stood as a testament to the strength of its residents. They had lived through a terrifying ordeal, but they had emerged stronger, a triumphant smile standing up against the memories of fear. As they moved forward, the eerie legacy of the daily tribute would remain with them, a chilling reminder of the time when they faced death and lived to tell the tale. And there we have it, folks, the chilling saga of the daily tribute. Life in the Oak Leaf Senior's home will never be the same after this eerie experience. A simple morning routine turned into a life and death situation. But in the midst of the fear and uncertainty, they found strength in unity and resilience. As we leave the tranquil yet forever changed confines of the Oakleaf Senior's home, we're reminded that sometimes, the most terrifying tales are woven from the threads of our daily lives. Thank you for joining us on this dark journey, dear listeners. Sleep well, and remember, the next time you casually flip through a newspaper, beware of what may lurk between the lines. This is our Scary Stories signing off for tonight.